welcome to the Laughing Monkey Music Show. Today we have a special guest on. We have a drummer extraordinaire, John Bermuda Schwartz. How are you? Hi, I'm very good. Thank you for having me. People that don't know, John is the drummer for Weird Al, and you have been with him from the beginning. Well, uh, uh, almost, since almost. shortly, almost the beginning. I mean, I mean a, a little bit before the world became aware of him, I guess. But he had been doing this for a few years prior to I meeting him. Yeah. But this was, uh, I came in at a time he didn't have a band. He really, uh, you know, he, he was still kind of starting out. And I got in there and, and uh, I don't know what made me say it, but I said, you know what, you should have a band. I'll be your drummer. And not having any idea what would happen from there. And he said, you know, okay. And it just, it went from there. I think it says a lot because it's pretty much like having an original core members in the very beginning and growing as a band and as musicians and as friends, it says a lot about an artist and the group of people, all of you as a team, you know, I, I think uh, it's an important well, part. Well, thanks. Well, and it's, and it's like a lot of bands. I mean, it's a family. I mean, we're, right. we're family. Uh, we've watched each other grow up, get married, uh, you know, have kids. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty cool, you know, and to be able to work together, uh, and and make a living at this and still enjoy it and still have the same guys. I mean, that's that's very rare uh, in this business. And I think what's really great is I, I like all kinds of music. And, and anybody knows me, I, actually do, I do a side show. I do some Zappa stuff. I do shows with Teresa Zappa. I'm a big Zappa fan. So one of the fun things about um, Weird Al and all the music you guys do is, and you guys even do a, a Zappa-esque song that Teresa played on, is – you, it is very, it's fun, but once again, it's very smart music. I mean, just no, no, no lack of quality in the chops of music, just because it's, you know, it's got puns in it. It's quality uh, yeah. music, and it's and it's and it's, and it's different. So, like as an artist, it's got to be exciting to be challenged all the time. Different types of music. Well, it is. I mean, he throws a lot of stuff at us uh, on, on the parodies. Of course, he's he's always uh, parodying cutting edge kind of. Uh, uh, the production and stuff like yeah. that, which we have to rise to the occasion, you know, lest we be re, uh, replaced by someone else who knows better. So we've learned, we've learned a lot. Uh, you know, I've learned a lot. I didn't start out as a programmer, you know, 40 years ago. I mean, I, I learned programming and sound design and, and got, you know, we all got pretty good at that stuff. Uh, but on his original songs, uh, he's, he's, a, he's a very good writer. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very melodic, you know, when, when he wants the song to be that. I mean, sometimes he deliberately writes a quirky song. Uh, and yeah, the music is, is very serious. You know, the only gag is the lyrics, hopefully. Right. And, uh, and, and we've had a great time with it. And I think it's funny because, I mean, he is a good singer. And, he, he, and it was really interesting is he does a lot of different voices, like voice voicings for the songs. And to get it, you, you can pull them off, too. So like a lot of people, if you have one good voice, you can't do a lot of different sounds. He's been able to move it around like his voice as an instrument, like the rest of you guys playing to the songs. Right, we're all kind of chameleons, I guess. I mean, you guys could probably get away with actually doing an original song with a different name. You know what I mean? You could write, you guys could uh, write 10 songs, serious songs, and nobody would even know the difference that it was the same band that was parodying other songs just because, you know, they're really good songs, the originals, you know. Oh, well, well, thanks, and thank you on behalf of Al. Yeah, you know, on, uh, honestly, they, they would stand alone on their own as instrumentals. You know, uh, the only thing that makes them different is is Al's lyrics. But you take those away, and it's it's all straight music. Now, it's been like, what is it like forty years, thirty years, thirty years? You well, we've been it? we've been on the scene. Uh, first album came out in eighty three. Yeah. Uh, this band was put together in eighty two to to basically record that album, and we've been touring since eighty three uh, as this band. I mean, it's the same Steve J on bass and Jim Kimo West on guitar. Uh, me on drums. We added a key, uh, sort of semi-permanent keyboard player uh, 90, in 91. So he's the new guy. He's been with us, uh, you know, 32 years now. And, uh, so he's <laughs> and you still haze him, right? You still haze him oh, as yeah. a news guy? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He has to take a lot of a lot of guff from Al and, uh, you know, but not that he doesn't enjoy it. He enjoys uh, the attention. Uh, you know, right. he likes, he likes, if he's being made fun of on stage, that means people are looking at him and he likes that. So that's fine. That's, that's pretty funny. I think, you know, I've never gotten the chance to see you guys in, 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 in live yet, but I've seen a lot of your tapes and your live shows and stuff. And, and as a band, I mean, what does it take as, as a drummer? I mean, cause you play a lot of music and you've been playing this for long enough, like the stamina. How are you keeping up during downtime, like COVID and stuff? You're a drummer. It's a lot more physical than as a guitar player. Well, in my case, I, I play with uh, other bands. Now, the other guys have their own music they want to do, and they, they do that in, in, in different ways, different formats, and uh, you know, sometimes they go out and play a bit. Uh, but I have other bands that I play with, uh, 
you know, always with the understanding when it's time to go on the road, you know, you're going to need to get a sub. Uh, right. But I'm in like three or four other bands here in LA, some of them pretty, pretty long term. And, uh, and so that's how that's how I sort of keep in shape, you know, mentally and and physically. I don't really practice at home because I'm busy enough with these other bands. Now during COVID, I mean, I, I lost most of 2020, and about the first half of 2021, uh, nobody yeah. was doing anything, and uh, and I just and then you know and then I did have I kept drums set up here and I sat down you know a couple of times a week and and just played a little bit to make sure I could actually still play you know if I ever got called for a gig again. And the second half of 2021, it began to pick up a little bit more. Uh, 2022 was a, a very busy year with Al on the road. So, uh, uh, you know, I was back in shape for that. Came home for a few months, did a few more gigs, you know, stayed in shape, Christmas and all that. And then we went out for two more months uh, uh, earlier this year uh, to Europe and Australia. Uh, a few dates in Hawaii, our first time playing in Hawaii. And, uh, you know, and had a nice time. And, and we'll take the next year, a year and a half or, or so off. And then uh, we'll go out and we'll do some more. That's incredible. You guys, and as I look at the, the list on the, on the uh, Weird Al site, and we'll talk about your site too. You have a really great site. You are the king of archives. Oh, I want to talk about it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love the I love that OCD nature. I, I like that. Um, but you guys are at a point with a band where you guys sell out a lot of places and you've got that nice, comfortable level where you have a great fan base. Like it's fanatic. Like it's you know, like like a lot of the bigger bands over time, and you know, it's a loyal, loyal base. that really get the the deep jokes, like a way, 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 way the meta, meta, meta jokes. You know what I'm saying? And, well, and, and not not just because, yeah. Well, they're not just fans from way back. I mean, because they're they're beginning to get a little old as we are. But we we have been because of the nature of Al's uh, humor and the parodies, uh, which are aimed at a, a younger audience, you know, arguably. Uh, those fans are starting to come to the show. So you go to one of our shows and there's, there's, uh, you know, six and seven year olds, there's 60 and 70 year olds. I mean, it's and everything in between. And so we have got, uh, you know, it's not just that our audience grew up with us. I mean, they're bringing in, they're bringing their kids in and new, new kids are discovering us. And those are our new fans as well. So, uh, you know, it's a very wide uh, demo at one of our shows and uh, our tours are different. The, the last couple of tours we did uh, were, was sort of an unplugged, kind of a tour and featured mostly originals, almost all originals, which is, is really aimed at the more hardcore fans because the mainstream crowds know the parodies yeah. and that's what they want to see. They want to see a lot of production and video and costumes and stuff. And uh, last year and this year and in 2018, we did uh, an ill-advised vanity tour, just an unplugged, no frills tour, no costumes, no videos, no nothing. Just us playing, literally the guys sitting on stools on a rug at the front of the stage. And that's how we did those shows. And we so we played smaller venues, like 1,500, 2,000 seaters, uh, which for us is on the smaller side. Right. And uh, But uh, on a normal tour, and we're going to come back with the production tour again next time, I believe. But in 2019, we did a production tour, and we had a symphony uh, in each city waiting for us uh, and came in. And we had a, a you know the a strings attached tour, as opposed yeah, to no strings that? attached. About that, if I can just stop pretending that for one second, like I always wanted to ask as an artist coming as a band, you guys are a well tuned machine to begin with because you guys are I've been playing together so long, you guys know each other, so you know the music. A symphony is, is, is some serious musicians, they're going to know the music coming in. So, when two, two, two machines meet like that, is it generally pretty smooth, or is it like sometimes it's like you know, metal against metal because you know, two different mindsets? If, if well, if they're good, I mean, they're just playing parts and, right. and they're all, you know, a, a lot of the orchestras are, you know, there's, they're not all old people in there, you know, and I'm sure most of them are familiar with Alice music and, and most of them probably have played with, you know, pop and rock acts mm -hmm. before, you know, they're not just doing classical music. Uh, the, the orchestras, and it was a different orchestra in each city. Uh, they had the music in advance. Uh, they, they, uh, I mean, they, you know, they had parts that were written out, scored for orchestra, orchestral you know, players. Uh, we carried the conductor because the conductor has to know the show, of course. Right. Well, uh, yeah. So that was that was the one constant. And he would rehearse uh, the orchestra in the afternoon. He would rehearse the entire. Okay. They played every song. Uh, they they did the entire show. So he would rehearse them. We didn't have to do that because that's like us doing a whole show and then coming back and doing a whole other show. And that's a little hard on Al's voice. Uh, yeah. So so they they would play to you know in the first couple of shows we did we recorded them. You know we got good performances. And and uh, the show was the same every night. There are actually two two versions of the show, but it's pretty much the same. So they would know in advance what the show was, so they could rehearse it if they wanted. But again, they they're reading music, so it's not that hard. 
And they would run through the entire show that day. And then we would work with them literally for the first time at Showtime. In fact, they started off the show and then I would come in and start playing. It's an instrumental song and I would come in and 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 finish up. We all started joining in and then we're all playing together. And then Al walks out and then the actual show begins. And in that, in that venue, we were playing. And again, this was with the production and parodies and the whole thing. Uh, we're playing to the more mainstream crowds. And so we were playing larger venues uh, in that. You know, it's uh, uh, sheds, they call them. So places like uh, uh, the Greek Theater in L.A., a Wolf Trap, um, uh, stuff like that, out, uh, outdoor and larger yeah. indoor venues. Well, that makes and, that makes sense economically, though. If you're going to be hiring a symphony, you better be playing a bigger shed. Well, well, that too. We can't we can't have fifteen hundred people walk in and and you know pay for it all, uh, and we don't charge a lot for tickets. I mean, tickets Doesn't are like, like you know, yeah, sixty five seventy five dollars maybe. This is not we're not charging two hundred fifty bucks yeah. or twenty five hundred bucks or any of that stuff. Right, you know, it's right. very modest, very modest. Uh, so and and in that we we played Red Rocks on that tour. We sold out Red Rocks, and and so that's the difference between playing for nine thousand people and fifteen hundred. You know, and again, we we're we're good either way, but it depends on the show that we're doing. So when we come back on the next tour, I believe it's going to be the full production. We're going to go for the larger venues again, and uh, you know, and that's and that's always very satisfying as well. I mean, it's nice to have a large audience out there. I mean, I don't care if I you know, when I'm playing in my local bands, you know, maybe I'm playing for thirty or forty or fifty people, you know, and it's for me, it's the same. I mean, the money's not, but I mean, it's the same feeling. Oh, yeah. I get the same enjoyment as playing for three or four or five thousand people. You know, so I just enjoy playing drums, and that's that's what it's all about for me. Well, I mean, I think that's to me. It almost sounds like as a musician, it really is a perfect world because you get to play all kinds of the music. You get this gig, and even with Al's music, you guys are playing different types of music all the time. It's not like you guys do do more variety than most actual rock bands do because oh, of the yeah. sets and the change up, and it's 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 it, you know it's very interesting. And and even the music, like people can laugh at like you know my my Bologna or you did Sean like those early parodies or some parodies but but like when you get songs like like word crimes or something and the lyrics are really good and the beats are different and it gets a little more technical you, it's a different audience so like you really you know your your um the genre for you guys is wide open like oh yeah well the and the thing that that makes it all gel is the fact that it's all funny Right. Or it's or it's supposed to be. No, it's, 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 it's no, all really it, good. It's funny, but it's smart funny. I mean, like, like literally, this is a word crime today. I'm like, it's smart funny. Like, I'm like, yeah. I'm like I don't even think the people that need to hear this are going to get the song. Because, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, there's some smart lyrics in there. And funny. But every, you know. everyone, everyone else can laugh. So that's the smart people can laugh. So that's good. <laughs> it's, it's some funny stuff. So one of the great things also that people don't know is you are <clears throat> the best, probably, archivist, archivalist for Weird Al. I mean, imagine. Even Weird Al will probably have to say at this point, you have more stuff than probably <laughs> anyone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I've just, you know, I get stuff um, on the inside, so of course, you know, I, I, I have access to a lot of things that uh, that most of the fans don't, uh, whether it's product or, or promotional this or that, or uh, things from the videos, or just uh, photos. I mean, I, I've always shot tons of photos. So, I mean, I've got, uh, I keep lists of everything, uh, a lot of details. Things that, uh, that nobody has. Well, beginning to, to do well, that. I, I, mean, just, I can see like later on in life, like you know, you want you want a couple of these things, but like right out of the gate, you've got lists and copies of oh, yeah. everything. I mean, well, that's, and that's something that I always I always did that though. I mean, I did that as a kid with just my other personal life. I just because I, I think I'm basically sentimental, so I like to have stuff, and mm -hmm. I like to keep track of of what I've done, you know, and and uh, just just because. Just because I like to know, just if I ever think of something, and I guess I knew this early on, that I would have a, a, a reference. I wouldn't have to try and remember something, remember it incorrectly, whatever it was. So I've always logged all the sessions we've done, all the details about them, all of the gigs we've done, all the details about the videos, uh, directors, the locations, uh, you know, dates, of course. Uh, anything that's, you know, release dates of all the albums. Uh, the uh, I mean, I early on, I had the the dates of the albums when they were shipped to the radio station. I mean, I knew the days they, they were sent out. <laughs> I, that, I knew the dates crazy. that they were, that they were sent to the stores. I mean, I just, I, I had all that stuff. I, I, and it's all written down and I've saved everything and it's all in a database, you know, all the books and stuff that have come out and, and uh, you know, anything that I'm involved with, I like to have a copy of and which is most of what Al has done, but he's also done a lot of other stuff for some other people and been involved with other things. And it's just, it's a very short, jump to go ahead and get those things and add those to the archive even though that's not my archive anymore you know now those things are specifically him but really it's all 
it's all him. And I don't have any kids, so I don't have anyone that this is going to get left to. It's like, oh, my dad played on all this stuff. It's like, no, it's, this is all going to Al or or his uh, you know survivors uh, who are, I, I'm sure, in anticipation of how much junk there is. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of stuff. It's a yeah. very massive amount of stuff. A museum. I mean, it's you know, <laughs> there's a lot of a lot more books there probably too. You can probably do some really just nerdy to nuts and bolts of nerdy Al and just you know travel logs like everything like crazy pictures. You know, like those crazy um, scraptivity style books where it's got like different types of textures and everything on it. You could really yeah. just chalk some books full of that. You know. Well, I I have thought about that. I mean, I have a couple of books of of my photos Which uh, pertaining I want to, to Al. So, yeah, yeah. That's a, oh, okay, but I but I I had thought. Okay. There's a possible book as well to to feature the stuff in my archive. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of the fans so. wouldn't wouldn't have seen it, you know, of course. And so that's that's a, certainly a possibility. That's going to be a lot of work photographing all of that stuff. But that would also be a lot of fun. You know, give me a chance yeah. to get I mean, because I have boxes of stuff I haven't looked in in years. I mean, you know, I, I finish a box of something, it gets put away, and then, you know, Al will open it up someday when I'm gone. I mean, that's probably the next time that'll be seen. So it might be interesting to go back and, yeah. and you know, look at some of those things and, and basically, basically catalog them in a book. And, uh, I I, you so. know, I think I don't know that it would have as much mainstream appeal as a, a general photo book of Al, but there's enough hardcore fans where, you know, we could probably sell 5,000 copies of that. Well, as long as you break, there's a certain point as an artist. I mean, if, as long as you enjoy it, if you break even, it's it's about being an artist and creating, and I'm not putting it, putting it for you because time is money, and you've been doing your whole life, so it might not be as, as exciting. But I'm saying, but when it comes to do, doing a project that excites you, it's, if you're paying, if your bills are paid, sometimes as an artist, you are like it, it's it's worth the end. The end is worth it. Yeah, you know what I mean. To look back yeah. and be like, it's all there now. Somebody else can hold it and look at it because all these treasures are great. But if no one else can enjoy them, you know. Well, it becomes right. a landfill or something. You're like, oh, that was, you know, a shame. Yeah, I mean, else got to see the, it. These are essentially going straight to Al someday, and uh, and then he he won't show them to anyone. So it's like I I don't know. You know, maybe maybe a book is a good idea. You know, just sort of get them out there. I, I, as the nerd in me would lo would love to see something like that. I mean, because there are until people go on and look. And when you go to your go to your website, besides Word Al's, so you have a great website. And you have your books up there. You've done two books, but there are all videos out there with you going through some of your archives and it's very exciting because it's like, what's he going to open in that box? Like, and you're showing just different <laughs> things. You could probably just do an easy like video web series and visually hold up because you know oh. you're going to open it up and go through like memory lane and that's what's going to take all the time of your memories flooding in. Not, not well, that would be, that, that's actually not a bad idea because then I wouldn't have to worry about photographing and writing descriptions. I could just yep. look at it and just, Talk about and it. very, spontaneously just talk about the stuff and just make little five or six or seven minute videos yeah. and it would be a lot less work than than trying to put out a book you know that's a good idea good i'll time. give you a link to those videos if i ever do it i would appreciate that so <laughs> let me know so i make sure i, can, I see that um but it would be like, like i said there are people that watch them because you've done some of those and you can look at them online and people have put up of you doing those and those are fun i mean i i remember specifically we did that for the uh, box set, the squeeze box uh, set that came out to help promote that. And and that was done. And, and some guys from uh, Sony Music came out. And uh, one of whom was, was uh, Mike Duquette, was a, a major Al fan. And he and the other guy, a guy named John Jackson, uh, had come out from, uh, they were part of Legacy Recordings, which is part of Sony Music. And they came out and coordinated all that stuff with me, went through all my photos, went through all the archives, uh, Came out at a later time, once they realized how much stuff there was, came out at a later time and shot some videos of me opening up boxes. And I mean, literally, I that was really live and spontaneous. I mean, yeah. I didn't I didn't plan anything or plant anything or what I just I just had a box and and I said, Well, here's a box of some of the earliest stuff and we'll start here. And that's I there were a couple of those videos. And that was a lot of fun. They were really short. I mean, they were mercifully right. short, but you know, I think the fans would, would appreciate something I a little more in detail. Yeah, I saw them. I mean, that'd be great. You, you can put that up on your own website. That could be a treat to I, your website for the fans, you know? Oh, true. Something something to think about. Yeah. But so let's talk about you. So you also, you, your albums, you guys, you're a good photographer too. I mean, you have a lot of different oh, skills. Thanks. It's got to be, oh, you're very welcome. It's, it's, 
let's, you know, let's, let's be honest. Nowadays, photos are easier for a lot of people. Like even I have been accidentally taking more good photos <laughs> because of oh. the technology of my camera. But that's not about being a good photographer. There's way more than that. You have to have an eye for the right moment. And you can be 35 different poses, but there's only one picture that's the right moment. And that's I, one of the class that you're at with a lot of the pictures I've seen. But I looked at my line. I haven't seen it. Held the books. <laughs> but but it do, I, you know, being disconcerting it is a difference, you know, in, in the photos you take. Well, uh, you know, I, I'm one of those people. I mean, a lot of photographers to shoot a lot of photos right. and a certain a certain percentage of them are really nice. And, mm -hmm. and you know, a, a lot of them should not be seen. And I certainly have a lot of photos of Al and, and the rest of the guys that don't merit any, you know, uh, being in a book or anything. It was that's a small percentage. Though, right? you know. that's, well, yeah. You know, that's you are, that's yeah. important. But, but I mean, I, you know, I, I when I think about it, when I have time, I have a good eye for composition and lighting right. and I pay attention and I, I watch the person's expression. And, you know, I'm very good at doing that when I have time. A lot of times I just snapped away and, and just, you know, took pictures that, you know, sometimes Al wasn't turned towards me, you know, I, I just, whatever. I just snapped and snapped and snapped knowing that some of them would probably be, you know, cool. I mean, I'm a lot more selective about what I take now, which is interesting because photos are free now. It costs nothing to, to right. you know, take a photo and distribute it and do stuff. You know, we're back in the day, you paid for the film, you paid for the developing, you paid for prints, you paid for additional prints if you needed them. I mean, it was an expensive proposition to yeah. handle a lot of photos that weren't worth seeing. It, and it, uh, it with, with, and the thing with the photos is really great. I think the difference is with you doing a book and just regular pictures, I mean, Photos are like songs where they can, it can be like an emotional one. You can look at the picture and it can evoke emotions or it can make you think mm -hmm. of a moment. So it can just be a shot and it's going to be the general atmosphere of what's going on around the scenes. And you can see like the little bits and pieces of a, of a video or something you guys did 20 years ago that no one can get that moment back. That's definitely a, a timepiece type of photo where you can get a picture where it evokes somebody's, you know, you or the band members looks on your face when a happy moment or a sad moment or tired on tour. So those are all different moments you can get. But when you, post something when you do a book and especially nowadays it's got to be like a greatest hits you know package of stuff to put on a book to get it out there now because a the world is not buying as many books of photos because yeah. there's so much multimedia so it's really got to be like your greatest hits you know to go through that well in the case of, in the case of my first book black and white and weird all over uh, which came out at uh, the end of 2020 those were uh all black and white photos and most of them had not been seen before uh, most of them, uh, I, they they just, uh, you know, you couldn't take that stuff to a one-hour place. Oh, you could maybe, but, you know, a lot of photos I took on the road, you know, we're on the move. I had to take them to a one-hour place, so I only shot color on the road. So I didn't have any black and white photos of us on tour. Uh, I just had black, but when we were shooting videos or sometimes in the studio, I would shoot black and white. But I didn't always get those. In fact, I never got them printed. I had, uh, I, I had proof sheets made. Mm -hmm. And contact sheets made so I could see what was on the negative strips, and a handful of a handful of them were were printed as eight by tens. I mean, maybe a dozen photos, oh, wow. and all of those photos appeared as eight by ten from the first two videos we shot. Anything after that, nobody had ever seen. Nobody saw them ever. There was no web yet. You know, nobody had seen any of those photos. Al had never seen them, and I thought, and I was I was going through an archiving process on all my audio stuff, and when I finished that, this was maybe 2016, 2017, uh, I, I thought, you know, I probably should check out my negatives. Let me see what I've got. And all of my negatives are completely organized uh, by date. I have envelopes with, uh, you know, the, the information on them, names, places, you know, everything. It was very, very detailed. And again, that's something I did since the 70s. But I came back across, and I knew they were in there somewhere. I didn't think about them. But I mean, in, in exploring the amount of negatives I had, I said, you know what? Nobody's ever seen these black and white negatives before. No one's ever seen these prints before. Uh, you know, they, they've never been printed. Yeah. They don't appear on the web. They're th These are brand new to the fans. I think they might like these. Plus, the ones that they've seen, the very handful that they've seen, and some of them have been in print before, but these were all made from a print. They were never taken from the negatives. Uh, I went ahead, had all that stuff digitized, so I had absolutely pristine versions of all the photos. Went through, was able to, you know, do a little bit of doctoring on them, and found... I, I thought I found about 500 photos that I thought the fans yeah. would like. Well, we pared that down a little bit to a little over 200, uh, which was which was probably fine. Which, but almost all of them were brand new to the fans, so that's what really helped and, and made that book unique. That was a really that was a special book, and and uh, 
not something you can really put online very well because the, the you know the resolution just isn't the same as right. looking at a, a printed page. Uh, so that was that gave impetus for the second book, which uh, are all color photos. Now a lot of those had been seen because I had prints of all of those, mm -hmm. and I, I started doing Al's website back in 1995. So uh, with, within a year or two. I had, I had uh, scanned photos and those began appearing on the site. I mean, I eventually had about 12 or 1300 pages on his website of photos of my photos. Uh, but again, these were in various qualities. They were all taken from prints because I hadn't ever scanned yeah. those negatives before. But for the second book, uh, Lights, Camera, Accordion, uh, I, I, I personally scanned all of my all of my color negatives. So I was seeing stuff I hadn't seen in years. Oh, wow. And seeing it in, be in better quality and, and with more detail and more of a full frame taken from the negative than they would print on a four by six or three and a half by five print. Yeah. You saw more on a four by six. And uh, but you didn't see the entire, you know, you didn't see edge to edge. Now I'm able to scan edge to edge and top to bottom. And I'm seeing, you know, a little bit more of this guy's face who was, who was cut off before and stuff like that. <laughs> and and, I, and going through those, I thought. There's some really good photos, even the ones that have been seen, even the ones I scanned from prints that the fans have seen before and that are out there on the web permanently now. Uh, one, the quality is much better. Uh, they're sharper. The color is better. Uh, the uh, the density is better. Uh, and the resolution is going to be much better because in the old days when I started scanning stuff, uh, a, a computer screen was, if you were lucky, maybe you had 800 by 600 was your resolution. Oh, right, yeah which nowadays is really, it's pretty small. That's like maybe about a fifth or a sixth of a normal screen. And that was the size of the photo. And so they're all, they're all kind of small. They're crunchy. You know, back in the days of dial up, when I started doing the web stuff, uh -huh. uh, I couldn't, I couldn't make big files. You know, I had, I had photos that filled up a lot of the screen and they were only like maybe 25 K, you know, there were no, you know, 500 K photos or two meg photos or anything, you know, no videos, gosh. And, but that was in consideration, you know, of, of dial up speeds of download speeds, which were just, you know, ar archaic then. So I just, I, it was, it was of the moment. So those photos now are, yeah. are crystal clear and big and brilliant. And, you know, so that's, that was my second book, which came out in late 2022. And you both uh, on your website. So people can buy them, go directly to your website, right? They're, well, they're, it brings you to uh, Amazon, but, but it's, Link to your website. Well, it, well there, there's am, actually almost any bookseller, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, Target, uh, Amazon, of course. Uh, the publisher sells them. Now, the first book is out of print, and the distributor is is out. They, they have sold out. Now, there are stores that, that took them at the time, and they still have some copies. I know Barnes & Noble bought a bunch of them early on, and I know that some of them still have that first book, even though it's not – there won't be any more. So yeah. it's it's possible to find it. There are independent bookstores. So there's you know uh, you go on Amazon and it's all marketplace. It's all secondary yeah. sellers with those. Uh, so it, it's available. It's certainly possible to get a uh, used. You know people are selling them on eBay and stuff like that. Uh, the second book certainly is still in print, still available. Uh, you know the the uh, publisher sells at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Target, Walmart, uh, Book Soup. Here in Los Angeles on the Sunset Strip has uh, signed copies. I went up and signed a bunch of copies from. Uh, so that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, what's interesting is with with uh, that first book, even though a lot of fans had them, when we did the 2022 tour yeah. and were, had just come back from the whole COVID thing, we were under pretty strict COVID protocols. We basically weren't seeing any fans or anything. So there wasn't normally, you know, somebody would go, oh, I've got, you know, like they would bring a CD if they could find one of us. Yeah. Oh, would you sign my CD? And they would have brought a book. Oh, would you sign my book? Right. And couldn't do it but what i did do and al was very kind to let me said this is part of why they sold out he sold the book on the merch table at each of the shows six months worth of sales for uh, that the first book that's what helped yeah. sell it out and i would wow. go and i would i autographed all of the books and they were sold as autographed copies not personalized but you know i i signed them and they were and they sold them at the amazon price for like like 25 bucks or something so it was a good deal Cool. And and they were signed and had sold a bunch of books, sold 30, 40, 50, sometimes more copies a night, which is pretty wow. good. I was really very, good. very happy with that. And of course, Al, Al made money too, so he's happy with that. 
uh, you know, we, we both did well, but that's what helped the, the book sold out before the tour was over, which was, uh, which was pretty cool. How was the band when they saw those pictures? Like, cause it's gotta be exciting when you said, Hey, I'm going to do a book. And they always saw you with a camera, but you're like, okay, okay, cool. But then you're like, no guys look it. And also they sit down, you know, people that don't aren't into pictures when all of a sudden they see old pictures of themselves, they go, they sit down for a minute and they go, they lose themselves. And you don't usually see that. Uh, yeah. Well, one thing I did, I mean, you know, one is a courtesy and, and two, I I didn't want to hear back yeah. or, or create any resentment, but I ran everything by everybody who was in the book. Yeah. Uh, and, and Al had right of first refusal on everything. And from there I went to each of the guys and, and I think, I think the guys in the band said, no, you know, I don't, I don't need to see him. It's fine. You know, you, 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 it's fine. Don't worry about it. Although it's interesting in the second book, then they all wanted to see, yeah, we'd like to see those photos. Really? All of a sudden it was, they wanted to know what was in them. Uh, so well, it's not like you guys are decadent. You guys aren't like Motley Crue or something. You guys no. are a fun bunch of guys. So it's just going to be fun pictures but, anyhow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's certainly nothing in there that that should have been embarrassing. Right. And yeah. if it was, you know, and if there was, you know, Al certainly had a chance. He did, and there were a couple of photos he pulled, actually, uh, in the uh, in the second book. There were a couple of photos that, and and I submitted like 800 to him, oh, and uh, he picked he picked like five, which didn't help me get the number down the way I had <laughs> hoped it would. But he found five, and none of which I thought were really an issue. But he just there was whatever it was. He and yet there were other photos in there that I thought for sure he would have you know, yanked yeah. and, and they seem to be fine with him. So, but I'm glad I was able to do that. And, and, you know, so I did have everyone's approval before I went and put that out there and, and, you know, so I could make a puck on it, you know, on their likeness, you know, I got, I got, the, I got their permission. And uh, so I don't think there were any surprises for anyone in the book. And they, of course I gave them each, you know, a couple of copies. And, right. and I think they, uh, you know, I think they enjoyed that, you know, cause they didn't have, copies of all of those pictures and it's certainly like your not yearbook, the, right? the way they oh uh, yeah it's like a yeah, yearbook well, for you guys you know yeah <laughs> well in the one case it was from 1981 to 2006 it was a 25 year yearbook uh for wow. the for the second book and the the black and white book was a fairly short period uh mainly because i i only shot black and white with al during like 1983 to like 1986 in in some cases Mm -hmm. uh and video shoot and i also had it's interesting because i had color i would i carried two cameras back in the day and i i uh would shoot color as well so i have a lot of photos that appeared in the black and white book and then as i'm going through all my color photos a couple of years later i'm saying that's really similar that's the same pose as this other black and white shot that we used in the other book so one i can't use it but two i realized i must have been standing there with both cameras had the guys you know, took a couple of pictures that, wait a minute, let me get them in color. And they got the other camera and took some more. And everyone is, uh, one thing that's remarkable is how patient everyone, because I really was all over with the camera. I mean, I really was places where I would never go today with the camera. Like while they're shooting video, you know, while they're shooting Al doing stuff, you know, I'd be back there taking pictures. And I know that, you know, the sound of a clicking camera wasn't a problem, but I was back there you know, and I'm out of people's way, but I mean, I'm still, it's obvious right. that I'm like doing stuff. You know, I wasn't hired to do that. I'm not some official set photographer, but I was the only guy there with a camera, you know, that was using it actively. And because I'm not in every scene and every video, I had a whole lot of time to shoot what was going on. So that's how it happens. I was able to get shots that nobody else has got. Um, wow. there were, you were consistent there were, though too. Uh, well, I, I, you know, ho hopefully, yeah. I, I uh, you know, I was able there were a few people around who took who took my camera and then took pictures that I appear in. So this wasn't all about photos that I personally shot, right. but they they were duly credited. There weren't too many of them. Uh, actually, in the twenty five years of the color book, uh, there there were quite a few people. I know each and every one of them <laughs> that took every single picture because I know who was there at the time and who I would have handed my camera to. And uh, so they are they are thanked in the book, of course. Uh, and uh, you know that's that's lucky. Otherwise, I'd never have any pictures of me. If I didn't give the right, camera to yeah. someone else, it would all just be about Al, which wouldn't be a bad thing. I mean, the, the black and white book is mostly about Al. There's a couple of black and white photos in there of, of the guys. And the only reason that, that those are in there is because sometimes we're in a photo with Al that was so good of Al. I didn't want to not use it just because we were in it. I really wanted to use that photo of Al. It's like, you know what? Uh, in this chapter, I'm, I'm going to have to use some pictures that we're in and fess up that somebody else took those pictures. I mean, it's not... I'd rather show the photos and give a photo credit than not have them be seen at all. 
And uh, and actually, the photo credit, the, the other photographer in the black and white and weird all over was musical Mike Kiefer. And he was the guy who was on, on the set of the I Love Rocky Road video and took uh, pictures that, that I appear in. So okay. that was uh, that was pretty cool. So, you know, of course, he was duly thanked and given a photo credit and a book. And, uh, you know, so that was pretty cool. But the, the books, I, I, I'm very happy with those. I mean, it was kind of, you know, one, it was cool for me to, to relive all of those moments because I'm seeing a lot of things I haven't seen in a long time. And and uh, they, it just it takes you right back. Like hearing a song takes you right back to, you know, some memory connected with that song. And here I am seeing actual photographs. It's like, wow, I remember I remember being there i remember taking that picture you know i remember in some cases telling al okay you know i'm going to take a picture do this or do some shtick or you know don't look at the camera or look at the camera or or give me a frown or give me a wacky smile or whatever. you know I, I remember all all the things that surrounded all of these photos so this is very cool for me too i really enjoyed it and hopefully some of that comes through you know to, to the fans that bought the books i've seen i've seen a lot of good reviews on it too um so which really um I'll sidetrack here. Let's talk about the, the, you, you, the looks and the appearance of the bands you guys have always, it's good that you documented pictures of it because you guys always had each video, each song, there's always a different look. And it always amazed me, this is more of a, a, a my own personal like, nerdy question is, costume change. How the heck are you guys performing in, in certain costumes and quickly changing as much? I mean, I know Al may have somebody helping him put on the, the fat suit or something, but I know you at the drum set, you got to grab it so fast. You can't have a team of people like a race car driver <laughs> to, to your tires. You know what I'm saying? How are you guys, you know? The, the, the uh, well, Al, when, when we're doing the costumes, Al does indeed have a, a, a costume a wardrobe person uh, that, that handles him specifically. Sometimes his hair needs to be pulled oh, back. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot more stuff going on with yeah, him of course. You're right. than, than goes on with our costumes. Our stuff, now we change ourselves. Uh, we don't always have the same costume change as Al does. Like sometimes he'll change costume. We don't have to do that change. So that that makes it easy. But we do have some changes. They are enabled by the video that runs between some of the songs, uh, which Al produces that video. And there's all sorts of clips of different things that have to do with Al. And, uh, some you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes exclusive content for that, and, you know, made just for the concerts. And that enables the video change. And over the first two or three or four shows of a tour, we learn and we'll edit the video, uh, uh, these these segments between the songs yeah. to accommodate the the costume change. You know, sometimes there's an extra thirty seconds we don't need. It's like you know what we, you know, that's a lot of time to make them watch this little bit. There's a twenty second clip I don't really like. We'll take it out. We'll we'll tighten it up. Or sometimes, boy, that was a really tight costume change. We better add thirty seconds. And Al handles all. It's all digital. And Al handles out all on the road. Uh, but the band, most of our costumes are all, and this is like an old theater thing, uh, like if we have a shirt change or whatever, it's all, instead of doing buttons, it's just a big Velcro strip. So we literally just put the shirt on, and not only for putting the shirt on, it's easy, but yeah. for taking it off, and it's done. Uh, you know, we may or may not have, uh, because I'm behind a set of drums, I don't really have to change my pants ever. Uh, what I do is I wear a, a pair of black pants for the entire show, yeah. And, and that's it. You know, I may have to, you know, I usually will change my shirt for certain songs. Sometimes I have to wear a wig. I mean, it just depends. But these are all things that the band members can do on their own. But yeah. Al, because he's from head to toe, uh, he's, he's got these changes. Uh, he will, he, ha he has an assistant. And then who, after we do the costume changes and we've, we've shed our old costumes and gone back, then, you know, they will uh, hang them up or if it's going to be laundry day the next day they put them in a hamper whatever it is you know they're monitoring all that and making sure that all our stuff is laid out in the order in which they appear in the show and it's all you know it's it's not too it's not frantic for us i mean it's well rehearsed and it's uh it's made it's quick change so it's, a lot it's, of Vel it's good a lot of Velcro, it's good though you know? it, but it's a nice but, but thank you thanks for sharing that because to me it's like it's like high-tech vaudeville yes. the little details matter Obviously, Al is going to put a bigger production on because more eyes are on him. But a lot of us are still going to check out you guys because you guys are very much a part of the production. So it's still very important to be to all be all encompassing. All the details matter in a painting. Maybe not. You may have the subject in the painting, but you better be taking care of the other parts of the picture because it's going to look kind yeah. of weird. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it it does matter. And and you guys do play in costumes as a musician, and sometimes it can be a challenge just to play in a costume. Yes. 
Well, in my case, because I, I am I have so much emotion going on, uh, there there was one one case where uh, it's it's during a song called "The Saga Begins," which is a Star Wars parody yeah. of American Pie. And now again, the three guys up front, and it's Al, Jim on bass, uh, Jim on guitar, and then Steve on bass are standing up front or sitting up front, whatever it is. And then the keyboard player and I are in the back. Now, the keyboard player, because he's just got kind of a, a thin thing here, you can see him and he's standing up. You can see him pretty well. I'm right. sitting down. I got stuff kind of all around here. Most people can't see my face at all. You know, they can maybe make out that I'm wearing something different. And I'm in the back. So, mm -hmm. and there was this one that during the saga begins, the guys up front have these, in addition to wearing a, uh, like a khaki kind of a canvasy type outfit, they wear these long sort of burgundy coats. Yeah. And I realized right away, right from the start when we started doing that, I said, there's no way that I can wear this other thing, you know, and wear this coat over it. My, my legs have to move. I, my arms have to do this sometimes. I said, I, I can't wear the thing. I can't do the coat. So I got out of that pretty easy. But that was, you know, I don't, some things it's like, you know, yeah, I can play in this. I will, I will wear this. Yes, I can play with wigs, hats, you know, other whatever. You know, right. a jacket, whatever. You know, so the things I can do, I do. And the things that are going to be a detriment, I can get out of because I'm not that noticeable uh, being in the back. Well, it's very entertaining, so, though. It does, does add to it. <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, and people that haven't, and I hope people, I mean, obviously people are familiar with, with Weird Al and, and all the productions are, are watching, are, are aware of the concept. But I'm hoping there's a lot of new people watching that aren't aware of it. And it's obviously you're not catching on tour. There's a lot of good video out there. And you, and you can see what I'm talking about with the band and the production. You know, obviously Al does steal your eye because he's, you know, he's very entertaining. But but, but pay attention to the stuff the band's doing. It's very entertaining. It, oh. There's a lot going on there, it, you know, than just what you see. You know, initially. Oh, you. Well, you guys are really good. You guys are a good band, though, too. You know, and you, you stop and just kind of focus on the band. You watch it a few times, you just focus. You know, there's a lot going on. And you guys are tight sounding. What are you guys looking at now? For the next uh, sub tour, I know you started talking in the beginning about it, but like, what are you guys looking at this next year of playing? Well, wh when we when we do go back out and and uh, I actually have a set list, a tentative set list for for this next tour, which is a, a year, year and a half, two years away. We don't know at this point what it's going to be, but uh, <laughs> Al's already thinking. So I've already looked at that, and and, uh, and there's some familiar stuff on there, and there's going to be there's going to be stuff that's new. Uh, to us on stage and probably new to a lot of the audience but we will the plan is to bring back the production so the video the costumes and uh and make that in lieu of promoting a new album which is what tours used to be right uh, basically the... changing up a lot of the stuff that the audience is already familiar with but presenting it in a slightly new way where we're uh we're looking to expand a little bit but but to change it we're not going to come out and do exactly the same thing we just did because it's they've seen that that was the whole thing with the orchestra. You know, it's like, well, they're doing the production of the costumes, but now they've got an orchestra. So they're doing all the same songs, but now there's, you know, violins and horns and stuff playing in a percussion section, you know, and, uh, you know, that wasn't happening before. So that's, that was visually exciting. Uh, it was interesting for us because everywhere, well, more for the conductor, uh, because every city had a different orchestra. There's some, in some yeah. areas it would be one orchestra might do a couple of shows with us, but for the most part, it's a different orchestra in every city. And, and the uh, and sometimes they were highly polished. I mean, we had the National Symphony play with us at Wolf Trap near Washington nice. D.C. I mean, that was a pretty big, pretty big yeah. deal. And interesting about them, they they were an excellent orchestra, and and you know, they weren't put together just for the show. That's an actual working, you know, seventy eighty piece orchestra. And it was interesting because, and I'm certain that they'd played with rock and pop bands before, but some of them, especially the violins who were right behind me, yeah. Uh, got thought it was apparently too loud. Now they put a shield up behind me to help keep a lot of the drum noise. I mean, the, the drums are one of the few yeah. acoustic things on stage still can't yeah. change that. And so, so I was blocked as much as I could be, but a couple of them evidently thought I was playing too loud and, and they got up in the middle of the show. I mean, fortunately between songs, they got up and they left. Two of them left. I turned around at some point to do a costume change and I like looked behind me and there was an empty chair. And then a couple of songs later, there was another empty chair like kind of right behind me. And I, and I asked the stage manager, I said, did you, where did the guys, the violin players go? And he said, they, they walked off. They, they probably thought it was too loud or maybe one of them actually said that. I don't know, but I thought that was, 
interesting and a little unprofessional because that didn't no, happen I, I anywhere think it's else. Very, it's very unprofessional. I would think you still have yeah. a job to do or at least move because you're like, I can't hear, so I'm not playing properly, so it's affecting the show. Good excuse. Well, so, they... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying if they moved somewhere else, and they oh, yeah, yeah, adjust yeah. Their, their sound. But if you leave, that's yeah. I don't know. That's weird. Not yeah, I hope I hope they didn't get paid. But anyway, I hope not. Uh, but but there were there were various levels of uh, quality of orchestra, and it depended a lot on the location and if it was like a real orchestra or if they just put together some players from the community and put together like thirty or forty people and and. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, who didn't really normally play together. Maybe they weren't experienced players. And so sometimes the orchestra didn't sound as good as, as other times. I mean, I think the audience found it to be, you know, exciting either way. But, you know, we, we could certainly tell and the conductor could certainly tell. And some, you know, you'd have a problem conducting some people. I mean, but it's but it's like that, you know, not all musicians can work well together. Yeah. And I guess not all people, even if you put music in front of them, and even if they're used to, to watching a conductor, can all do it the same, you know, that and there's there's a certain dynamic that has to happen there and it's not always there but but it's not it's that way with musicians too i guess or anybody or people, you know? yeah and that's why i thought about earlier yeah. when i asked about the combination of the of the groups coming in even a professional there's still dynamics that are different two, yeah. two different well 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 uh done machines i do have i appreciate the time to give you time. one one last question for you if i do i do shows with Tweezle zappa and i so i want to talk about this, yeah. this, this the zappa song you guys did because a it's a big song and it's quite yeah. a musical accomplishment for all of you guys, obviously Al included, but but you all, all, all you guys, it's got a lot going on. And then, the, then how did you guys get Dweezil involved in it too? I mean, he's a super guy, so you ask him, he's generally going to be super anyhow. But yeah, we I wasn't there that day, or trust me, I would have got photos. Uh, <laughs> that was something you know. Al Al's got good connections. Al knows a lot of people. It's possible he was friends with him prior to that. You know, it lends a little bit of. You know, not that we needed an okay from the Zappa Family Trust, but it, it lends a little cool thing to having him on the song, like having Ben Folds play on a style of a an original that we were doing of his style of, of song. Right. To actually have him on it, we did an original that was that was sort of a Hanson sound like sounded like thing, and he got I forgot who the keyboard player in Hanson is Taylor Hanson maybe yeah, yeah. he got Taylor to play the keyboards on that song. Yeah, not that our keyboard player couldn't have handled it. It's just it's very cool to have, uh, yeah, you know, the, the guy, you know, come on and and do do that thing. You know, which I'm glad that Al hasn't done that with drummers because he certainly has access to different drummers to come in and do all the different styles that I've done. To have those guys come in and and you know be the actual guy. But I've done everything that you hear is is something that I've done or programmed. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've been responsible for all the drum parts. It's funny you mentioned though the the, the song "Genius in France" that that Zap uh, Dweezil did the intro for. Yes, uh, we did that song because there were so many changes in it. Uh, yeah. We did that song like in in seventeen or eighteen segments. Okay, it's all separate takes that were all nicely seamlessly put together. But we we cut that in different sections, uh, partly for sounds, mostly because there were just some hairpin turns that would have taken a lot longer to try and do in one shot. I mean, it's yeah, just not yeah, possible. Yeah, Zappa is a different type of band. I mean, they, they recorded, they, yeah. they practiced, they rehearsed to be that kind of a, a musical animal. Yeah. And and that's not normal for, for no, a rock no, band. No, 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 and, no. <laughs> and so we wanted to, uh, and, and that's one of the reasons, uh, partly it's, there's usually a vocal uh, inability to to properly do, you know, to, to do the vocals justice. That's usually a good reason to not do certain songs that yeah. we historically don't do. Uh, is because there's just there's no way to do it live and make it sound anywhere like we wanted it to sound when we recorded it. And Genius in France, partly the vocals, but partly because of all the musical hairpin turns that go on in that song. It's just without without changing it and making it a completely different song, right. and then we could play it. And then, but now it's not Genius in France anymore. Now it's on some other different thing, and maybe that's not what the fans want to hear. We don't know. We've done that a few times. But yeah. but Genius in France was was recorded and and in several sections and Al was concerned that it was going to take all day and he booked the studio and that was the only thing we were doing that day we were just going yeah. to do that and and dedicate ourselves to that and it was I, it was seventeen or eighteen takes I've got it charted out and I know where all the breaks are and we knit, we got it down like in three hours cool. and you know, all the starting and stopping and, and making sure it was right and then moving on to the next set. And we got it done. And at the end of that, it's like, oh, I 
I didn't have anything else planned for today. I guess we can look at tomorrow's sheet and, and get ahead of schedule. So we were we were that good on that uh, to be able to to wrap it wow. up pretty quickly. And very, very proud of that. One thing that that uh, there was a mention in Drum Magazine uh, and, and the reviewer said that I did a very good Ralph Humphrey uh, impression, which wow. is a lot of what I was going for. Uh, a lot of the drum beats, I, I took a little bit from Ralph Humphrey from the early, the the uh, overnight sensation and, and mm -hmm. some of, you know, that era of record. Uh, I took a, stole a couple of things from uh, 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 Chad Wackerman, a couple of things from Terry Bozio, just a, a little bit of, of signature things that I threw in and, and maybe made a little twist on them. So it wasn't like, well, that's not exactly that fill, but it sounds like it goes with the Zappa song, which again, it's like you got to play drums like you're playing with Frank Zappa because that's what the that's the plan. And it is. And, and I, I'm very happy with with what I did on there. That would be a tough one to do live, though. There's a lot. No, going no, on. I wouldn't expect that. I mean, it is a good good album, but it shows how good of a band you guys are, though. And it's a good song. Mm -hmm. and, I, and the iron the ironic part about that is, as you say, like you, you try, the plan is to try sounding like Zappa. But like I've had Chad Wackerman on, and we've talked about it. Like he, I'm like, so how was it like working on this album? Because you know the album he's played on. He goes, he goes, I didn't really play on the album because Zappa was always recording, kind of like you were always taking well, pictures. So his drums ended up on, on like that. So he was even in that mindset of recording the album. He was playing drums for songs. So he, you said I'm saying it's like he was even playing to do a Zappa on himself. Like it was just playing music, which is which is pretty funny how it all it all comes about because it's still known for being these monstrous songs that you know, yeah. are, are a challenge. Um, it, it, and, it, and it helped that we were all major Zappa fans. Uh, you know, uh, Al was, I was, uh, the guitar and bass player, keep, everyone was really excited about the song and, and knew what to expect and knew what it needed and fortunately could play the parts. Uh, you know, and, and uh, what's interesting and, and what's interesting about assembling all these parts is there's one one transition we made that sounds like it was an edit and it actually wasn't we actually did do some like hairpin turn and something and i and when i listened to it back i said that sounds really good and i went and compared to chart i said oh we actually played that we, we actually could play through that little change that was cool but well, uh, yeah we're, we're we're very proud of that one and that's one of there's a couple of songs the fans really would like to hear live and that's one of them and i, I just don't see it happening yeah, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't know how you guys would do it either. That's a, that's quite a, a, a big, big thing. As far as, um, and, and so I want to end this on a, on a high note. Any, I know because you guys have a record label, you guys have done some singles. Is there going to be any new music? Maybe hopefully with the, the tour when it comes out, are you guys going to do like singles? Because I know I see you guys have done some singles. The world's different. Well, now. we, yeah, yeah. Well, under contract, uh, we weren't really able to just do singles. You know, if Al had a brilliant idea for something, it had to wait until there were 11 more songs to go with it so that Sony exactly. could put out a full album. You know, they're not in the business of selling singles, or they weren't then. They weren't then. Uh, yeah. Actually, no, actually, nobody's selling anything now, so it doesn't really right. matter. But but we, uh, uh, you know, the move to not re-sign with them back in 2014 with that last album, I, I think was a good one yeah, uh, because it does give Al the fr gives Al the freedom to write something and put it out immediately you know on his own which he could do and and you know he knows he can promote it and uh you know you don't need the label and it's not like there's going to be a ton of money to be made but at least he'll get that money you know the label is not show, right. spending off 80 percent right. of it and it's right. current and, and then it has well, to right, match it right the times because by the time he writes something the signals could change a year later it could be well, like no exactly and and that that happened. That frequently happened. We would record right. songs, and they would sit in the can until Al would come up with the single, which would be current. But all the other things, all the other parodies that were current when we recorded them, are now six, eight months, a year old, right. and have been replaced by something else. And and uh, you know, so as it is, it's, it's possible there could be something new. I don't know. I mean, Al's not working on anything right now, you know. But the day's not over. Uh, you know, it's, it's, cer curious. it's certainly possible there, there could be something new on the next tour. I mean, that would be a bonus. That would be cool. Uh, but there will be songs, a bunch of stuff that we've never played live. Okay. And, okay. uh, that will be a little bit of a challenge for us and will be very cool for the fans. So that's, what's going to spark attendance, uh, you know, for the next tour. Excellent. I want to thank you, John. It's been awesome. Been a big fan. Oh, thank you, Sean. I've really enjoyed your playing. I'm glad I could kind of 
peek behind the covers there. I always watched you play, you know, especially with live videos. I always have questions about that. So it was kind of cool to hear that, that back behind the scenes information that uh, I had never heard in other interviews. So, but it's, it's really cool. People check them well, out on the website. Uh, uh, I'm looking here. It's actually called BermudaSchwartz.com is the website. That's where you guys want to go. Check them out. And everything's on the website. Uh, everything there, they can contact you. You got your links, your gear. I mean, you got a lot yeah. of stuff on that. And oh, yeah. if everybody's looking, I don't remember the name. And somebody out there, there's, there's a couple, there's some really good people out there that have some good other Al videos on YouTube that, that talk about, that show the video, some of the, of the, um, the breakdowns for the promotional things and the archiving that we were talking mm -hmm. about. It's actually out there. It's pretty easy to find. Uh, I, I source the people. I just don't know who it is now. People, you guys are probably better at the internet than I am. You'll find it. <laughs> um, but thank you, man. I appreciate it. It's pretty awesome. Oh, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, all. Okay. Bye.